Beautiful. I, I, that's awesome. It's kind of like the crappy art style, you mm. know? It's like what we used to do as kids in the back of our books, mm. not to be like, this is an amazing drawing, mm -hmm. but to draw something funny, hand it over to your friend. You wanted to do it in a rapid pace, kind of like Pictionary. Mm -hmm. And then you go, hey, mate, look at this. And then they look and then they just start laughing at this ridiculous character that you drew. And then they draw a moustache and then they'd hand it back to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that was kind of the approach with the art style. I, I had to uh, like sort of... Uh, go back into my mind, chat back to primary school and high school doodles, um, especially going from photorealism sometimes <laughs> to doodles. It's uh, it's a bit of a jump, but um, it's one that I'm willing to do. And I, and I think I did it pretty gracefully. <laughs> um, uh, but thanks for that. Yeah, the, the, uh, I'm, I'm happy with how that turned out. <laughs> I get lots and lots of positive comments on how Uncle Unco looks. <laughs> They're like, it's so jank but cool and like um yeah it's, it's exactly what i really wanted it to hit so i'm really happy that the art came through mm -hmm. so what actually went like because it, it there's obviously a a procedure that goes into making something that is like really polished looking right like you'll go through a bunch of different iterations and try to make it look nice and clean like even in the case of uh, don't let him in where it has that like ps1 sort of style to it there's obviously a clear direction you're trying to go with there but what was the approach with doing the art with uncle unco was it just like if this is the first thing that came to mind let's go with that or was there still that sort of iteration on those designs uh there was definitely actually there was a <laughs> I, start, I found myself in the, at, the, at the beginning mm -hmm. being caught up in the drawings because mm. you have to do like three three cell frames per thing and then they're always animating and looping. Very similar to Cuphead, but mm -hmm. more with an MS Paint line structure. So not like a clean Walt Disney, like a, a bad sort of doodle drawing. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> and you need to do, th well, I would have to do three frames per, um, per, per image. And... When I started, I was like, oh, this guy's hair's not good enough or this, that, and the other. But of course, eventually you start to get into a bit of a, a flow state with it mm -hmm. where you just start drawing so quickly and you go, that looks like a peanut. You know, it doesn't really need to look like perfectly like it. You don't need to do shading or no gradients, no, no, no multiple colors, just one or two colors, like a very <laughs> simple shadow line. And um, yeah, things started to take shape and... Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, when I did the first few assets and I started laying them in, I was like, this is great. This is starting to feel like a pop-up book. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and you know, like all with those 2D elements, parallaxing as the balls coming through, mm -hmm. it just gives a, set, a sense of depth to the scene. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that was, uh, that was fantastic. I was very happy with the way that that kind of came through. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of our process comes from what's next. Mm -hmm. You know, we started by saying with Uncle Unco, let's make something simple. Mm -hmm. Let's go back to grassroots. A roll the ball game. Mm -hmm. So we quite literally put a sphere in Unity and started moving, making a ball move around. And we thought, okay, this is kind of boring, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's just a ball moving around a scene. How do we make this a bit more exciting and engaging? And we thought, let's put arms on him mm -hmm. and like, then it would be really goofy, right? Mm -hmm. And then he's like, and me, like me and my friend were like, yeah, that sounds really funny. And then like I, I would go through and do it, and I'd show him, and then he'd be like, yeah, this is really funny. And then we're like, what? It, the original idea was mm -hmm. we wanted to call him Meat Man and make him like a meatball, like mm -hmm. a saucy meatball that slaps things. And uh, yeah, exactly. And like, so, um, yeah, there's there's so many weird and wacky ideas coming out of the studio. Mm -hmm. But then we thought like. It could be a bit graphic. Like, mm. we, we, you know, if you think about it, meat man, meat, meat sack, I think is what he wanted to call him. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, you play it instead of Uncle Uncle, you play as meat sack, right? Mm. Same game, but instead of being a fluffy ball, you know, you're kind of heavier, you're more sloppy, you know, you're more like Plumbo in that sense, because, you know, um, for the, the audience members, Plumbo. Mm -hmm. was uh, a follow-up to uh, this Uncle Unco. It was just more of a um, a technical follow-up mm -hmm. where you play as a chewed-up gumball named Plumbo who must um, uh, go through his day shift at a pin factory and not pop his head. 
So um, these are very much along the lines of the ideas we like to put forth, are mm-hmm. like things that if I say something, especially with the lighthearted stuff, mm-hmm. I say something to my friend and he chuckles, we go, that's it. That's cool. Let's roll with that. Um, <laughs> for some reason with Plumbo, he was initially delivering plums like instead of just flying around and then so my mate was like what if he delivers but and then we like eventually were like wait how do we make a mechanic about delivering plums we're like nah we'll just we'll just make it like you know you have to dodge pins and mm-hmm. that you have all these different contraptions that can try to kill you as a plum as a gumball mm-hmm. so yeah just back to that point of like things some things come out of necessity mm-hmm. some things actually uh, thinking about it now just come out of like um a bit or a gag that like mm-hmm. one of us says to each other just like meat sack it's kind of like oh yeah and then we some of them don't fly and we mm-hmm. don't roll with them of course i like with any idea sometimes you're like that's a good idea at first or it makes you laugh really hard but it's just it's not going to hit as hard as you think it is so you have to <laughs> right. you know take it back to the boardroom and like <laughs> sounding board it with people mm-hmm. and, and and more often than not they'll let you know mm-hmm. so what is the, like, when Uncle Uncle is finished, like, what is the plan for the game to have content-wise? Oh, that's great. Um, Yeah, so uh, we're looking to make two massive run levels. Mm-hmm. So um, what I've noticed is that um, with really young children, I might need to make, like, a bumper mode, quite similar to, like, bowling, mm-hmm. um, where, you know, for children, there's, like, two little rails on either side of uh, the, the alley. Mm-hmm. Um, so within this platformer of Uncle Unco, when you're moving down the level, mm-hmm. just having little walls for really young children um, because I found that um, I want like four-year-olds and five-year-olds to get further than they did. Right, right, um, right. Yeah, so I initially made the game um, for... Like, uh, we, we, we shifted the focus from Meat Sack to Uncle Unco mm-hmm. when we realized that it wouldn't work with a young demographic. Or, like, Meat Sack, just the name Sack, I think, in anything is probably just not a good play. I mean, you know, it has, like, when you, I think maybe one day we might revisit that because, you mm-hmm. mean, it's, it's the whole thing of, like, if you laugh, it's probably a funny idea, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but, um, we noticed that if we moved more towards, Uncle Unco, a fluffy ball, and we, we played around with art styles and we kind of landed on a, what we thought was really cool for him as a character. Mm-hmm. And then, as you said, for the environments, everything's sort of 2D and different. So mm-hmm. he has that contrast with him in the environment. Mm-hmm. Um, that was um, uh, the big thing to be able to give it to my niece and nephew and say, here you go, play this, enjoy um, the fun little world that we've made. Um, Whereas before, I can't show my nephew and niece, don't let him in. I can't show them all these other things that I have been working on. And I'm very proud of too. Mm-hmm. I just can't show them off to them. Right, so right. I figured like, I want to make something that I can, um, you know, show off. Um, and uh, my little nephew, Henry, has been the best little play tester. Mm-hmm. Just a shout out to him. Um, he's telling me awesome ideas, you know. Mm-hmm. Um Kids have their best ideas sometimes, especially within game development. Mm-hmm. If you're a game developer and you you have a you have a kid play testing your game, listen to every word they're saying. Mm-hmm. It's crucial, crucial information. Even though if it doesn't make any sense, it's like you have to decipher through what the kid is saying, and like they're gonna tell you exactly what's wrong with your game. They got no filter, so yeah. <laughs> 